farmland belonging to the people of Ubuluku community in Anyocha, South Local Government Area of Delta State, was gutted by what they describe as a strange fire which resulted in the loss of their sources of livelihood. Although the cause of the fire is still unknown, they are asking the government to help them back on their feet. The once busy southern farm in Delta State has now become a shadow of itself with burnt cassava crops, oil palm trees and fields of different crops. Ashes around the farm area clearly suggest a degree of burns, leaving the farmers with almost nothing to fall back to. The day when I come from, when I got here, what I saw was a burning farmland. I don't know the root cause of the fire, and all our crops is gone. This is where we get all of that don't burn. The fire have already burned all our cassava and everything in our farm. So we don't have anything to say because why we don't see anybody that put the fire. So we are managing it. We, are, we still need help. Southern Farms is operated as an integrated farming system with many farmers working here and the manager claims the fire destroyed allied plantations, subsistence arable crop farms, leaving many jobless and hopeless. When we got here, it was very hope. It was helpless. There was nothing we could do. The fire was everywhere so high, as you can see from the camera. We lost over uh, 200 beehives here. And one beehive used to give us about eight liters of honey. So when you times it, you should know how much we have lost. Although the source of the inferno is still yet to be ascertained, there are speculations that the farm might not be unconnected to indiscriminate bush burning, a situation the state government cautions against. Well, let me say that as a government, we are very much disturbed about the level of um, destruction being visited on farmlands on account of uh, indiscriminate burning of bushes. And to that extent, we have kicked up sensitization uh, program. We have had calls to produce both jingles and then use, taking advantage of our state orientation bureau to reach out to our people to avoid such indiscriminate burning of bushes because beyond the area that you want to set ablaze, sometimes it escalates and it touches other areas where individuals have vital, vital projects, either houses or farmlands. Ubuluku is an agrarian community which depends majorly on farming for income. The rainy season which forms the peak of the farming season is just around the corner and all they can hope for is a quick response from the government to address their plight. In the last one month, the nation has witnessed over 10 fire incidents, which has resulted in the destruction of property worth millions of naira and also involved fatality. Lagos, Anambra, Oyo and others have become some of the states that have witnessed fire outbreaks. Our next report examines fire disasters across states. Fire is said to be the greatest servant, but the worst master. Difficult to control when it turns into inferno, burning and destroying everything in its path. According to the Federal Fire Service, between 2013 and 2018, over 5 trillion naira was lost to inferno. Apart from scores of lives, they were also lost. In January this year alone, several states in the country witnessed one form of fire disaster or another, starting from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Adile Ekbo area of the state, raging fire from the explosion of a vandalized NNPC pipeline killed about two persons and several houses were burned. Also, another multiple pipeline fire occurred along Fagba and Ekoro Road in the Ju area of the state. At the Amu market in Mushin, also in Lagos, wooden and polyvinyl materials worth millions of naira were consumed by fire. And in Lagos Island, fire occurred at the Martin Street beside Great Nigeria Limited. And the most recent is the one that hit Balogu market this week. Still in the southwest, in Ogun State, over 300 shops were raised to the ground in an early morning inferno, which occurred at a popular Sabo market in Shagamu local government area of the state. Oyo and Ikiti State were not left out. 
moving to the southeastern region of the country in Anambra State, over 400 shops were destroyed by the fire at the old motor spare parts market in Obosi, in Idemili North local government area of the state, with property worth millions of naira damaged. <laughs> In the northeastern part of the country, an overnight fire occurred at the Red Bricks housing estate in Damaturu, the Yobe state capital, burning down two blocks of apartments. Aggressive. For the Controller General of the Federal Fire Service, action must be taken to prevent these recurring disasters. What Nigerians should expect in 2020 is a aggressive public enlightenment in terms of fire safety. People and infrastructure need protection against fire outbreak. Experts believe there is need for increased awareness and knowledge dissemination to reduce fire risk across the country. Joining us to look at fire disasters across the country is Mr. Timothy Iwagu, a fellow Institute of Safety Professionals of Nigeria, Lagos coordinator, safety expert as well. I want to thank you so much for joining us on the News at 10. What's the reason, really? Because uh, this, this is just so widespread. What is the reason for the surge in fire outbreaks in our country today? I think the reason for the surge is uh, mainly the absence of consciousness among the people. Uh, the, 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 the level of awareness uh, needs to be beefed up too because it, uh, there's a relationship between awareness and consciousness. And I think uh, uh, it is a very serious embarrassment on the government and the people of Nigeria. Uh, because by the way we are hearing of fire incidents across the states, uh, since last year it has just been uh, something of um, every week one incident. And then, you see, we lost a lot at the World Health Organization facility in Oshu State at Oshobo. We had two incidents in Onicha, close enough, one on the road to Enugu on the highway, and the other one that spilled across the road when a truck fell and gutted Ochanja Market. A whole lot of things. In Lagos, we have it repeatedly. And you look at it, it's about the level of awareness. The, the, the people are not exhibiting enough consciousness. And then you look at the side of the government. The government, when we had the, the National Fire Safety Code in 2013, people were very happy. But that code uh, leaves a lot to be desired in implementation and interpretation. What do you mean when you say it leaves much to be? You say implementation and uh, interpretation. Yes. But... Uh, when you have that code in place, yeah. all the people need to do is just to call that hotline and then you can get the fire service guys, which is uh, what is, is the norm. That's what they usually do. The bone of contention happens to be that while the people, like the Balogun incident, while the people complain that the firefighters are come arriving late, the firefighters have disputed that, saying that they came in on time. But access seems to be a challenge. How do you work around access to fire disaster points? Exactly, that's what I'm talking about. The code, leaving a lot to be desired. The code is not just about calling the fire or the first responders, the emergency services. The code has a lot to do with the structuring of uh, industrial environment, residential environment, commercial environment. How to prevent fire from spreading and engulfing adjoining facilities when one is involved, when one facility is involved in fire. Now, the code uh, did not uh, say much about how to go about the implementation. The code has outlined a lot of things there, but we are looking at situations where industrial facilities are interwoven with uh, 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 residential facilities. So estates are now having industrial activities. And then if you look at it, the population is growing. And the facilities for uh, 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 putting off fire 
uh, why do you expect, how do you expect fire service to come from a distance, a very long distance, to respond to something? You should cite fire stations close to marketplaces, close to where you suspect, because there must be uh, impact assessment before you cite certain things. If there are issues, how do you go about them? Ordinarily, let's assume all human factors fail, all efforts to mitigate or prevent fails. Do we have a deliberate policy to take care of the vulnerable citizens? Are there any insurance covers? Are there such things for marketplaces? These are areas where the people depend on their livelihood. And now we are concerned about this. Awareness. People are not acting as if they have memory of what happened just yesterday. So once it's over, everybody goes about their normal business, commits it. So awareness in this instance is the key. Yes, it's, it's the key. And then look at the, fa the fabrication of our trucks, the, the, the tanker trucks. When they fall, they spill their content. By design and construction, the content of any truck is not supposed to be spilled when it falls. That's, that's, that's a good place to let it rest. I most sincerely thank you, Mr. Timothy Iwago, a fellow Institute of Safety Professionals of Nigeria, the Lagos State Chapter, as well as a, uh, uh, a specialist in fire disasters. Many thanks indeed for talking to us here on the News at 10. Thank you very much. You're watching the News at 10, reaching you live from Lagos. Let's switch our gears now, shall we, to business news with BC Adebayo. Many thanks, Gimba. Crude oil prices declined further this week as markets grew more concerned about the economic damage of the new coronavirus that has spread from China to around 20 countries. Brent crude fell 20 cents to end the week at $58.09 a barrel, while U.S. crude futures declined 72 cents to $51.40 a barrel. Investment bank Goldman Sachs says the coronavirus outbreak is likely to hit China's economic growth by 0.4% in 2020, and will potentially drag the U.S. economy lower as well. Analysts also say the virus outbreak could cut China's oil demand by more than 250,000 barrels per day in the first quarter of 2020. The University of Lagos has emerged the winner of the 2019-2020 edition of Nigeria's stage of Global CFA Institute Research Competition. The university beat 24 others in the annual competition held in Lagos. The purpose of the research challenge, organized by the Chartered Financial Analyst Society of Nigeria and sponsored by Zenith Bank, is to introduce students to the practical side of investment analysis and inculcate relevant skills required for a career in the investment world. Six universities out of 24 made it to the final of the CFA Research Challenge. To clinch the most coveted prize, each team of four students assumes the role of real-world equity research analysts and carry out equity research reports on a publicly traded company with the aim of arriving at an investment recommendation to buy, sell or hold the company's stock. Know that the bank is operationally efficient. Now, Findings from the research are condensed into a presentation to a panel of of industry experts for evaluation. The company in focus this year is Zenith Bank. We issue a buy recommendation on Zenith Bank PLC with a one-year target price of 30 Naira 20 Kobo. In the end, winners emerge. Bibire. In the individual best performances, Bibire Akibabola of the University of Ibadan is recognized. Besides a cash award, an automatic employment with Zenith Bank awaits her after school. Please help me welcome the team from our host, Investor of Lagos. For the second in a row, the team from the University of Lagos comes top, leaving their closest rivals from the Abafemi Awolowo University and the University of Ibadan in second and third places. For us, we've 
capitalize on who we are as a people, what we know how to do best, and with the mentorship from our faculty advisor, we'll be able to put in yes, that extra that game to, to win the competition. For the organizer and sponsor, the competition offers numerous advantages for the students and the industry. It's just for us to see what we can do to ensure that students of finance, students of accounting, aspire to that high level of becoming very outstanding uh, professionals. I think these students have this opportunity to actually ensure that when they come out of school and they go into the investment industry, they are actually ready for the market. So they are trained fit for purpose and whoever employs them, in my opinion, will actually be getting very good assets. The winner of this year's challenge will join 48 counterparts in Jordan for the Europe, Middle East and Africa regional competition before the final showdown in the United States in April 2020. Through the Nigerian equities market now, which suffered its first weekly loss of 2020 as the impact of the CBN's hike in the cash reserve ratio to 27.5% resulted in sell-offs of banking stocks. The all share index dumped or declined by 2.7%, bringing the year-to-date return to plus 7.5%. A total of 1.56 billion shares worth 26.07 billion naira were exchanged in 21,444 deals. The banking sector shaved up 5.1%, and that's its largest decline since the week ended, August 9, 2019. Industrial goods lost 2.8%, and oil and gas shed 1.1%. On the flip side, the insurance counter gained 0.9% and the consumer goods added 0.09%. And that's it on business news. It's back to Gimba. Still ahead on the news at 10, American Sofia Kenin wins maiden Grand Slam title after beating Spain's Gabriel Muguruza 4-5, 6-2, 6-2 at the Australian Open. That's the sports news. Stay with us.